Hello and welcome to this first episode of this Azure Data Factory Zero to Hero series. Now, today I just want to look at what Azure Data Factory actually is and why you should use it. It can be quite complex to get your head around because it's, it's run through Azure, the portal, where there's a lot of different technologies that you may rely on. But throughout this series, I'm going to try and help you understand every individual facet that you need to become good with Data Factory. So if you use Microsoft technology, or even if you don't, um, you probably want to use it if you work with data. So it's cloud-based, you can perform ETL, data transformations, and then load the data somewhere. Um, you can schedule pipelines, so essentially just that's your method uh, for ingesting data, performing transformations, several low-code steps in this case, um, and loading it in somewhere. You can build complex processes um, and schedule these or run these in triggers. Ultimately, the key goal is that you take raw data or unstructured data and organize it into a lean, mean data warehouse or, or whatever, and then you can have a, a good approach to potentially data modeling in another application. So that would be the goals. Now, it can be quite complex at first um, because there's a lot of terminology to get around. Um, but when you look at the basic concepts, like here, essentially, we have real time and stored data. We want to perform a few steps with a low code approach and basically transport it into a data warehouse. That's perfectly achievable and it's actually quite simple. So when I go to the portal, which is just portal.azure.com, it can look quite overwhelming because unfortunately, ADF does rely on a few different tools uh, based in Azure that we will we will look into. So I'm just going to go through a demo here of how simple it is to take some JSON data um, from, uh, it's actually Azure blob storage, and we will look at configuring these things later on in the series. And then we want to perform a few transformations. Naturally, we want to flatten that data. Um, we might want to map the column names. We might want to rename those. And we're going to filter the data and then pop it into my Azure SQL database. So you can see here that I'm just taking JSON data. We go through all the steps. Quite often in these steps, we don't actually have to do much. And we can just preview the data. And you should see that we have 500 rows and no errors. So that's the first stage, essentially. Um, we have pipelines and data flows in Azure um, Data Factory. They're quite simple, but predominantly you may want to do your transformations in your data flows, and then you can group a lot of these steps together in pipelines, and it may lead on to stored procedures and things and, and loading things into SQL. But we will break these down in future episodes. You can see here in this step, I'm simply taking on you know Pascal case naming. Potentially the organization wants that. Again, we can preview. You'll see in Data Factory, like I said, it's low code. Um, in some cases, it could be no code if you want it to be. Um, the output of each step is the input of the next. As you can see here, just write a simple uh, less than or equal sign those operators um, and just restrict. Now we have half of our data set because we wanted to just filter by anything equal to or less than the ID of 250. Now, another thing, I've specified resource groups. Um, you'll rely on those. You would rely on linked services, essentially, to store your data um, and things like that. But we're going to actually break that down, so we won't worry about that right now. As you can see, I've published this data flow, and now we can just pop this into a pipeline, if I like, and actually just run this. So you can see how simple it is off the bat. I've taken some JSON data just from, data, just from sample data that I've stored in um, blob storage which is just a way of storing data in Azure. And then I can just debug it. And this is actually just going to run our pipeline and you'll see it takes about 18 seconds, but then I'll be able to go into SQL Server Management Studio that's connected with Azure SQL. And I can then see the fruits of my labor. It's successfully been transported into just a standard DBO schema. So that's how simple it was. Obviously I speed it up slightly, but just to give you a flavor of how easy it is to start actually transforming and transporting data. I'll get into much more complex use cases later on. But as you can see there, we have 250 results, as we would expect when we filtered it, in, in a very short space of time. So what's to come in this series? Well, we'll look at getting started in Azure, and I'll show you how to get a free account and a free Azure SQL account um, for 12 months. Look at those other things we rely on, resource groups, storage accounts, linked services, transforming data, building data flows and pipelines, the all-important tasks. Then more advanced con content like expressions, parameters, triggers, scheduling pipelines, and some actual more advanced end-to-end -end use cases that you could likely use um, when you're learning or even if you are 
um, skilled in Azure Data Factory to just power up that knowledge a little bit. So stay tuned for the next episode where we'll look at actually getting started.